carboxylic acids are organic compounds that have the functional group COOH. And again, there's different ways to uh, represent or show this. Um, often you will see them drawn out like this, where we have a carbon double bonded to an oxygen um, and then with a single bond to an OH group. If you ask the displayed formula, you would want to draw this out in full. Um, so again, making sure we draw out the single covalent bonds between the oxygen and the hydrogen. So these are all equivalent. Um, so how are carboxylic acids formed? Well, there's lots of different ways uh, to form them, but one um, of the most common ways is um, by oxidizing ethanol. So for example, if you had a uh, bottle of wine that you left out on the side for slightly, slightly too long, um, eventually, the ethanol in the in the wine will start to oxidize. It will be caused by microbes and also oxygen from the air. And eventually, after a, a week or so, it will start smelling quite strongly of um, ethanoic acid. And it would actually start smelling like vinegar because ethanoic acid is the one of the main components in vinegar. Okay, so one of the main ways it's formed is by oxidation. Oxidation of alcohols. <clears throat> and again, we need to be able to um, uh, name and draw at least the first few uh, few of these. Uh, so the first carboxylic acid, again, it's going to, um, they're all part of one homologous series, they're all part of the same group of compounds. The first carboxylic acid is going to have one carbon atom. Um, actually, if you look at the functional group, C, um, double bond o, OH, uh, we're actually only going to have one carbon atom. So the first carboxylic acid would look, would look like this, and this is called um, methanoic acid. Again, the meth is coming from the fact we've only got one, um, uh, one carbon atom here. The second carboxylic acid follows exactly the same principles. This time we're going to have a... Uh, carbon chain containing two carbon atoms and on our second carbon atom we have our carboxylic acid functional group uh, oops never mind different color this one is going to be ethanoic acid um, also known as acetic acid in old money um, you may well have heard of acetic acid um, ethanoic acid is the proper name or the uh, official name for it now um, and the third one you need to know exactly the same um, principles again, this time we've got a carbon chain with three carbon atoms um, and this one is going to be called uh, propanoic acid. Let's go back to blue. Propanoic acid. Okay, so uh, again, be really, really uh, confident when you see this. As soon as you see this uh, functional group, you should be thinking, oh, it's a carboxylic acid. Right, uh, clues in the name really for this one. Carboxylic acids uh, dissolve in uh, water to produce, unbelievably, uh, acids. So um, they do uh, form acidic solutions. But one of the key things we need to know about this is how these acidic solutions are different to if you had, uh, for example, hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid. Uh, and in fact, the uh, acid you have will only partially dissociate. Okay, so I'll show, explain what this means in a sec. Partially partially dissociate in water. So if we go down to the bottom here, um, if you if you have um, let's say we've got ethanoic acid, which we're going to represent as CH three COOH. If you uh, dissolve this in solution, mix it with water, you actually get an equilibrium. So it's a reversible reaction um, where we have. Um, a H plus ion separating from the rest of the structure. Okay, so um, we have an equilibrium set up here. 
The reason why I've drawn this arrow going back so much bigger than this arrow going forwards is that only a very small amount of the acid will um, uh, will dissociate, will, will separate out. And therefore, unlike for hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid where they fully dissociate, ethanoic acid and other carboxylic acids only partially dissociate. They are what we call weak acids. So what this means is that pH will be higher than um, and for strong acids. So pH is of around probably around two two to six, depending on how concentrated the solution is. But you, you you're very rarely going to get below a pH of two. And what that means is there are not many H plus ions in the solution. Okay, so the equilibrium is very much towards this side. Um, they would go yellow or orange um, rather than red with universal indicator. which is again implying that we've only got um, a weak acid. Okay, um, other than the fact that these are weak acids rather than strong acids, um, they do tend to, to have quite typical acidic uh, properties. So just like for um, hydrochloric acid, if you reacted uh, ethanoic acid or any of these carboxylic acids with a carbonate rock, um, you would produce CO2. So react with... Uh, let's use the example of calcium carbonate. So just like any of acids, you would produce uh, carbon dioxide. And, and also, if they react with metals, you'll get H2 given off. So they do uh, react like quite typical acids. However, they are weak um, acids of a higher pH value than strong acids. Um, let's just label this up down here and the reason is um, we only get partial dissociation okay so again make sure you can uh, draw and, and name these uh, these three structures here uh, remember that weak acids only partially dissociate in aqueous solution they only uh, separate a little bit Therefore, they're weakly acidic. They have higher pH values than other um, acids that you come across. Um, carboxylic acids are formed from the oxidation of alcohols. Um, and ethanoic acid in particular is the one of the main components in vinegar. Last little section for the general formula. Again, let's build it up from, uh, uh, from the basics. Methanoic acid is H, COOH. Ethanoic acid is um, CH3. COOH, propanoic acid is um, C2H5COOH. The general formula for this one is a little bit trickier to work out. What we're going to do is we're going to keep the COOH on the end. Um, and this time we're going to have CN at the start um, and then H2N uh, plus 1. One thing to uh, one thing to bear in mind here is that for uh, methanoic acid, we still have the COOH on the end. N, in the case of methanoic acid, is actually zero. So for methanoic acid, we have no carbons there. H, a 2N would just be zero, plus one, so we have one hydrogen, then COOH, which is why we have HCOOH here. For ethanoic acid, we consider the N here to be one. Um, so just be aware of this. this. I really think that's unlikely to come up, but it's just something to, to bear in mind.